you can stop. You can stop what is bad in you. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Selamat pagi dan salam sejahtera. Good morning to each and every one of you here. Thank you very much for participating in this monthly uh, parenting talk. It is a talk that wanted to give the opportunity to parents to us to discuss the undiscussable subjects that may have your interest, may not be immediate, but it will be sometime in future. My name is Ahmad Fakri Hamza. I'm the moderator. Uh, together with me, Jamila. Yeah, uh, who will be facilitating together this session. Uh, together with us today, we have our esteemed panelists uh, who will be sharing their insight, their experience, and backdrop of the topic that we are discussing today, which is about guide your child to future career. Together with us, I have Cik Shah Rizal Muhammad Sofian, currently based in Jakarta, Indonesia. Salam, uh, selamat datang ya, Pak, <laughs> Pak Shah. Terima kasih. Uh, a Malaysian, uh, obviously, a uh, very experienced leader, working with both management consulting. And now he is in Conferry, uh, as well as HR, uh, passionate about this solving people. He's also the advisor for the national employment policy under the uh, PM's department, which I think uh, has some good insight uh, on the topic that we're going to discuss. And we talk about the end. Yeah. Okay. We have also as panelists today, um, Juan Rajad Diana, who is the senior manager in the scholars department in Ayasad Kazana. We are very, very fortunate to have her available today. Thank you very much, Juan Diana. Thank you. Thank you. She has keen interest in talent management, particularly in scholarship development, which sits in very nicely with what we are going to talk about today. That is in how do we make sure that we optimize or we make sure that our talent, the youth today remain engaged and remain interested and are able to realize their dreams as well as hopefully meet their parents' dream in that journey. True. True. I think um, sooner or later, for those of you who have children at a younger age, this will be one of the uh, well, this is going to be the milestone that they will have to chart for their future life and which is their career. And I think that as all parents, uh, we all want to raise successful children. But before we dive into the subject of, of parenting, maybe, uh, I, I like all of us to take a step back in looking at the landscape, the landscape, the current landscape of the job market, the changes that is happening that can impact not only present job, but definitely the future jobs. And in, in that case, maybe Cik Rizal, um, what, what, what do you think now, We're looking at this scenario that we are facing now, and then the picture that is being painted in future? Tell us, um, what's your thought or what's your viewpoint in terms of uh, the current landscape uh, in in the in the current uh, the current situation and around the world. Then over to you, then Jesha. Okay, thanks. Uh, Assalamualaikum, everybody, and good morning again. Uh, thank you for the invitation. With regards to your question about what's happening in terms of the talent landscape, if you're looking at Malaysia today, we've got roughly about fifteen million people who are working in the country today, right? So you're looking about, about you know, uh, from all different parts and of that particular note, about 70 plus percent are actual employees working with corporations. What is interesting out of that is if we look at some of the statistics that were shared earlier this year, we are starting to see a lot of people coming into terms with gig employment. Now, it's a term that I guess for a lot of us who are trying to figure out what that means. It is essentially, 
people are now working very actively on projects. Yeah. Now, so gig workers or gig employment, there are about 600,000 registered now, right? But there are definitely a lot more. And, you know, we anticipate if you're looking at what's going to happen over the next five years, there'll be a higher increase of people who prefer to work in this kind of environment. So that's basically just a bit of a landscape in terms of where we see it today, right? Now, if we take ourselves in terms of the next nine years, and one of the things that um, as, an, as someone working with the Conferry, who is a global uh, management consulting firm of HR, right? There is basically a lot of things that we can consider in terms of gaps that are going to happen globally, right? So if we consider a lot of the jobs that are going to move, they are going to be very different moving forward is all the jobs that are things that previously required a lot of manual intervention. So again, we all know because of digital, you know, manufacturing is going to take a very different view, you know, around manual work. Banks have started becoming very different. And so we see a lot of things in the next, what, 10, well, next five years, in fact, it's already started here, where there's a lot of roles dependent around the digital perspective, right? So you're looking right now, the data scientists, you're looking at information technology, you're looking at, you know, a lot of the environments where it requires you to be able to facilitate the entire digital transformation of companies, as well as, you know, just the fact that technology is playing a role for us, right? What we do see that, you know, again, there are a lot of other traditional or stable roles that will be inside here, right? Which require a lot of, you know, what we call people interventions. So you'll still see, you know, um, a lot of um, doctors, you'll still see the HR practitioners, you'll still see some engineers around, but the way that is going to work around moving forward is probably going to be quite different, yeah? So just to share with you again, we, there was something that said that if we consider just for Malaysia alone, if you're looking at the financial and business sectors by 2030, you're looking at roughly a deficit around, if I'm not mistaken, of between four to eight million employees. That means the demand is there, right? And if you don't have those kind of people with those kind of skills, and it's the different skills rather than the banks of five years ago, the unrealized output for banks is almost close to 900 million US. So we're looking at what, about 4 billion ringgit, right? So that's just to give you a bit of landscape, you know, as we talked about um, around what's going to likely happen between now to 2030. And again, it's interesting to see how people are, how, how people are looking at the job markets already as it is, right? Um, so yeah, that's maybe just to start it off, that's some of the things that I'd like to share. Thank you. Thank you very much, Encik Shah. That was really um, enlightening opening to our discussion today. I do believe that the digital transformation, as you pointed out, is very relevant, no matter which uh, discipline you do. In fact, it applies to not just the children, it applies to ourselves. You know, we have to do training from home, we have to work from home, whether uh, we as training providers, speakers are comfortable or not, and whether uh, the, the consumers, the end users are comfortable or not, it's something that everybody will have to quickly adapt and adopt, don't we? Right, thank you very much for that. And my first question to Juan Raja no Diana is directly related to your role as a senior manager in the scholarship department in YK. We know that Yayasan Khazana is a very uh, esteemed organization so what is, um, how, how do you, we know that you provide scholarships to the brightest young minds in this country. So could you enlighten us on what makes these scholars different? Perhaps you could enlighten us on the process so that we, you know, we can reflect as parents, we reflect on whether we are actually promoting or encouraging these similar uh, characteristics or traits in our children, regardless whether they are YK scholars or not. Over to you, Paul. All 
right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jamila. Okay, uh, as a scholarship provider that provides a full scholarship, of course, um, academic uh, excellence, I think, is, is very key uh, for us. So, um, but, um, in addition, you know, um, not just um, academic, okay, but um, we are looking uh, candidates that, that are, I would say, uh, holistic, okay? holistic in terms of, um, you know, they are, uh, have active in uh, co-curricular involvement, you know, have um, good uh, emotional intelligence, okay, have this um, uh, good analytical thinking, uh, creative, and, you know, can, can communicate well. And <clears throat> among the, the areas that we look at for, for candidates, we, we have that, what we call the three Ps. Um, uh, leadership uh, areas that we look at. I mean, the first P is actually the purpose, okay? And the second P is uh, personal, and the third P is uh, people. So in terms of purpose, what we look at is someone who's actually um, driven by uh, greater reasons for doing things. So someone which is, I would say that bigger uh, at heart, rather than just, you know, uh, you know, bigger, bigger from their heart rather than their head. Okay, so someone who is, you know, uh, always strive um, to, to do uh, very well in, in respective field they are in. So, and, and personal, for personal, of course, uh, among of the leadership qualities that we look at are the uh, high integrity and, and uh, moral compass candidate, intelligent and have the very high tenacity. And for people, okay, uh, we look for someone who is um, can work well in in, in teams, okay, uh, and then um, you know have a balance between empathy and expectations, and and the last one is um, of course um, the, the, the I think the key one is uh, ability to communicate uh, and and influence. So these are the three pieces or uh, the sub areas, the eight areas that we look at in the in, in our candidate in, in uh, for uh, Yasan Kazana scholarship in particular. So not just uh, academic excellence, but coupled with you know uh, active in uh, co-curricular activities, uh, social uh, involvement, as well as um, uh, have a good uh, good interpersonal uh, skills as well. So these are, I would say, the, the, main, uh, the main three areas um, that, that we look at the candidates. So Thank yeah, I hope much. that will give some flair to the, to the discussions, Jamila. Yeah, thank you for that clarification for uh, now, Diana. We are just wondering for me and Fakri, as we were listening to your explanation, that would be the big picture. Um, what would be the professions that you see fit into this holistic uh, you know, when you give the scholarship, are there considerations, are there priorities, or uh, how, I would say, what, what would be the, the professions, what the areas, the, the, areas, the disciplines uh -huh. that you would give priorities to? Okay, um, for us, uh, we still sponsor the traditional courses, uh, I mean, uh, in, in uh, businesses, you know, in, in engineering, okay. But uh, at the same time, you know, we give emphasis, uh, follow the trends uh, of the, you know, what, what required by, by Malaysia, okay? And for now, we can see that there's a trend uh, in terms of the need of uh, data scientists. You know, there are need of um, ITs. Um, so, so then these are the areas that we give uh, more emphasis on. But of course, there are, there are still, uh, you know, other, I would say uh, courses that that we uh, continue to uh, continue to um, support and and continue to uh, to sponsor. But every year we will we will analyze and we will look at you know the the course offerings you know. But we, because we cannot stop, we cannot like suddenly not sponsoring. Um, uh, for example, uh, engineers. Okay? Because uh, sometimes in terms of the job market, um, there will be just a temporary. Uh, temporary challenges, but you know we we still need to sponsor um, year in year out. But 
uh, for now, uh, emphasis will be in the areas of uh, data science, on the areas of, of ITs. And, and we see uh, in terms of even for this year's um, applications from our uh, post SPM uh, students, for example, uh, we, can, we can see that there's a lot of interest even from the from the our young talents who are actually uh, applying uh, in this in these courses. I think that's uh, that's really sort of tie in with what Kate Shah mentioned about the, the 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 requirement in the long run by 2030, and then you coming in to make sure that the nation has what we will say, the supply of this talent to fill up those requirements then. Uh, I wanted to uh, pause for a minute uh, to share with everyone uh, a, a short one minute video by World Economic Forum uh, in terms of what, what kind of job can you see uh, coming in 2025? So, so let's just have a quick uh, overview to see that it complements what Chet Shah has mentioned and what uh, Puan uh, Raja Nodiana has highlighted to us. So very, so very clearly it resonates what you have mentioned earlier about there is this demand, but it is shifting now. It is shifting from the agriculture, it shifted from the industrial revolution, it now into the digital era, more predominantly and whatever mundane manual uh, dirty jobs kind of things uh, would no longer be something happening in the long run and and i think this is where we need to then from my perspective uh, to raise the awareness amongst parents what's happening uh, i normally would say that asian parents in particular have a deal with their children D E A L, doctors, engineers, accountants, and lawyers. Okay, I add one more A for architect. The point is, is that the, uh, that has been the tradition. That has been uh, what people would term as success profession. But now look at even some doctors here in our country is grappling to get uh, their job uh, permanent. So I think I wanted to. Uh, ask Chet Shah Rizal, you know, when we talk about managing parents' expectation uh, on their children's success. So how can we tell the children, you know, uh, to increase the chance of their children achieving uh, their desired career goals versus the parents' expectation? I mean, I know you have a parent of three children, uh, growing up already and into their working employment. So how do you how do you see this um, in terms of advising parents, knowing that there are changes in the job market moving forward? Okay, uh, ask me an easier question, please. <laughs> no, I'm um, it's actually never to your point. It's never going to be an easy thing to tell a parent that they can't ask or aspire for their children to be a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer, an accountant, or even an architect. So when you, if you think about the reality here is, as we just talked about, moving forward, there are a lot of things that are going to change with regards to how we live life, right? Because again, we were just talking about some of the things architects are starting to feel that, you know what, it's harder for them to do because you've got co computer aided design, you've got 3D printing, all of these things coming in. What I actually, I mean, again, and I actually had to ask myself that particular question when, you know, when you ask that, right? And all I can safely say is as parents, what we need, and as I think maybe some of you may or may not agree is, we just need to be able to tell our children that you need to prepare for what is it that you can provide yourself wider opportunities, right? Because for you to say, I mean, for, again, as parents, we need to recognize that when we grew up, our reality was different, right? We didn't have technology the way we wanted to do it there, right? Again, when I had my first email, I was in Maybank in 1994, when some of my younger people had said, oh, I had it when I was in kindergarten, right? So in terms of showing where the divide is very differently. 
Um, my advice to parents is actually say that, you know what, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with asking your children to study what they aspire or what you have to do that. But always allow yourself the ability or allow them the ability to kind of like make adjustments based on what their reality is as they come into the workforce, right? Again, there are a lot of engineers in the world today who never started as an engineer who ended up becoming a banker. I know quite a number of chief executives who have, again, mechanical engineering backgrounds or you know, civil engineering, and they're very good in banking, right? Because one thing we need, we need to recognize is your education is the one that gives you the basis for problem solving, right? Again, um, I'm sure uh, Paraja would know a lot more given her experience around how they assess for people, but as someone who's done practitioner, I mean, has been practicing HR and, you know, doing assessments, you need to recognize that as, as people entering the job market, we're looking for a lot of very specific things unless your job role as a doctor requires you to fulfill that, right? So I guess, again, you know, it's, it's not an easy answer to say, but for parents, I suggest that if you're talking about this, understand the realities of the next 10 years, right? Again, to your point, doctors, we may need doctors, but is that the, is that the only thing that you can do, right? Um, there's a lot of things, if you consider what's happening in other markets today, where we're saying that, you know what, why is it, Asian students or Asian people are not considering setting up their own businesses. Entrepreneurship, right? You look at the West, that it, when they were small, they were educated in front of their house, go sell your lemonade stands, right? We, our kids want to sell outside. We say, hey, no, 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 don't go outside. There's bad, bad, there's bad people outside. Right? But again, to me, I think, again, you know, just my perspective view is support whatever it is that your children want to be able to do as an aspiration, but also generally adjust your own understanding around what the market is as you move forward. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably where I would, you know, I would, I would lead and have this conversation because we've had conversations with people to say that, you know what, should I ask my children to become a doctor? So, okay, let's think about it, right? Let's talk about all the options. And you ask the doctor, do you want to become a doctor? Oh, I cannot learn for nine years, right? Or whatever it is that they have to do. So yeah, over back to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Inchit Shah. I do agree with you. Actually, the truth is that, you know, it used to be when we look um, at decades ago, say 30, 20 decades, uh, I mean, 20, even 30 years ago, we realized that when you focus on uh, a discipline, let's say you want to become a doctor, that's all you have got to learn. You just learn how to be a doctor. But these days, when you become a doctor, you also have got to be an IT person, whether you like it or not. You know, you have to understand software, hardware, and that really puts you ahead of other people and enable, it is an enabler for you to be um, a better doctor, a person who knows the ins and outs of how the system goes. And uh, we can see that, you know, that, that difference, that, uh, that need for our children to be adaptable, to be agile. So on that note, uh, my next question to Juan Rajidor Diana is this. So we know that we have an uncertain future as much as we have to help our children prepare themselves. And we might, to a certain degree, um, help them plan their career if they are open to it. That's one of the things that we as parents have to do. So sometimes it feels like it's contradictory. You know, you're, you have an uncertain future. At the same time, you need to help your child plan for a career for an uncertain future. So is there a way to reconcile that? Oh. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jamila. <clears throat> I think one of the key areas I would say that, you know, uh, employers nowadays look for uh, someone who is very agile and flexible, you know, a um, uh, um, candidate that, that have uh, multiple skills, can, can adapt to various types of situations. So how do we then prepare our children um, for this? Okay, 
um, it's, it's not easy. This is not something that you can learn by taking mechanical engineering. It will answer the questions. No. All right. So <laughs> what we see is that, you know, um, uh, apart from whatever field of studies that you take, it's actually the, the involvement of the students, you know, in, in societies, in clubs, you know, um, that will give them a different type of experience. Okay, when, when you become a president, uh, you know, of a, of a, for example, uh, for, a, for a students, okay, for the students, uh, students club. So you will, you will have that, that different types of responsibilities. When you represent your university for rugby, for, for whatever sports, you will then build certain types of characters. I think that, that will be then, um, will be the, the added, I will say the added advantage for students who are not just confined to their field of studies, but actually explore um, you know, their, their uni life with, with various involvement in societies, in clubs, in, in uh, social activities. So I think that that will make the difference. And I think another thing is that, you know, um, do try out um, internships uh, for, for students. I know that um, for now, uh, even our local universities, they have a one, one semester mandatory for, for internships. But don't just, you know, um, do the, the mandatory requirements by the university. But, you know, for every semester, try out uh, various types of internships, uh, work schedules, you know. This will actually help out the, the students to, to prepare themselves, you know, to, to know what's, what's there in, in, in the job market. And, um, and I think um, for, for, for the parents, you'll be always be the, 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 the eyes and ears for your children. You know, give them the support allow them to, to explore because they are young. We used to be young as well and we, we, we like to explore various things. So yeah, have, have that, you know, give, that, give them that opportunity because the answers normally is not coming from us. The answers is actually the inner voice that comes from them actually when, when they know and they explore, they, then eventually they get the answer what are they looking for i think yeah i, I I'll, I'll i'll stop uh, now uh, jamila yeah, yeah no i i i think i like both of you uh, giving the two main ingredient which is uh, support your children adjust your expectation and therefore allow that agility and flex flexibility for the changes in this profession so I, I think we, let's 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 give the reality check. Let's give the reality check now. You and I do not access information just compared to our children, the millennials. Yeah. And then they see some icons who drop out from university and still seen as successful. Now. If you are saying that parents need to be adjustable and adoptable and that sort of things, there are children there who has the mindset, why study? Why go to, why go and slog yourself for something that you did not even use? So many parents study a certain discipline and when they come to the real world, they don't work what they were studying. So now we are, have to grapple, and this is something that I think uh, a question that would be nagging into the parents now where children feels that no reason to this examination is no longer relevant going to university is just a nice thing to have at the end of the day if i can make a better lemonade than the others competitor i can become entrepreneur so now they have this kind of mindset and obviously quoting steve jobs and bill gates of this world about not having the right degree and yet they have been successful is something that come up in the conversation. Shah, how do we handle this kind of thing, Shah? You know, because you are a proponent of adjusting expectation and supporting the children. Yep. <laughs> it's interesting that when we talk about su successes, we bring up people like, you know, uh, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Tony Fernandez, 
uh, Richard Branson. Uh, you know, you're talking about all of those people who, you know, some went for, you know, people, some did not graduate, some graduated. Um, I actually had this conversation and here's what I normally tell the young ones. I have no problem with you wanting to be successful, but how do you know that you're going to be successful if you don't have at least some fundamental education? Your earlier point, you can have the best lemonade, but if you don't know how to price it, right? Or if you don't understand the financials, or you don't understand how to market, then what you end up doing is you have a very good product that nobody else knows, right? One of the things that, again, the, the trickiness about some of these things is, as I said, you must be able to give children or people who want to do that the reality that it's not always what you see in TV, because everybody only looks at it based on social media or what they looked at in terms of movie of the week, the story of Steve Jobs. And there, I think there's six or seven of those, right? But the reality of some of these things, again, uh, is, and I've done this with some of the younger ones who I've coached before, right? I say, look, you want to become an entrepreneur, no problems. What is your operating model? What is an operating model? Okay, look it up. All will stand. Well, how much is the price of your product? Uh, and then after that, I say, okay, you want to do that? How much do you want to make money in a month? Now, if you don't have all of that, then how do you know whether you make money at all that? One of the things about, for example, our young ones today who open businesses like food and all of that is because they keep rotating food in and out, they sell, and then they buy food, but they don't know the basic concepts around you know, cost of food, how much to make profit. So when you ask them, so how much do you make? Oh, I make 2,000 a month, okay. How much do you basically have a profit? Right. So to your answer, to question, I mean, to your question, I believe that telling people you, there's nothing wrong with actually wanting to have aspirations to open your own businesses. I think we should encourage that. But the education is still something that we need to be able to have, right? Because I think let's just fundamentally also agree on two different things. Education is the non-negotiable, right? What you become after that is something that I think we can figure it out, right? As parents, you not jadi Superman couple, but if you don't know the fundamentals, like gravity, you're not going to get even off the ground, right? So for me, even when I talk to my, you know, uh, some of the younger ones who are coming into the workplace, people are thinking about startups. I basically just ask, basically, basically is, so what's your operating model? How do you make money, right? How much are you going to live, right? If you say you're going to do 10,000, and I'll give you an example of some of these things which are done. Somebody wanted to open their own online machan business to sell uh, health, you know, the health services, private training, and all of that. They say, I want to make 10,000. Okay, how much are you making now? 300. How do you get from 300 to 10,000? Uh, I literally had to sit down with him and say, okay, in order for you to do that, if you basically spend every hour charging this much, you basically only going to hit 6,000 because at some point you still want to sleep and eat, right? And again, I said, all of this requires you to have an education around finance, marketing, right? So again, all the things that you talk about here, people say, oh, Steve Jobs only what? I said, yeah, lah. there are 7 billion people in this planet and you only quote 1%, right? Okay, Bill Gates too, right? Nicholas Tesla, well, he's not the one, but you know, you're talking about, if you really think about the successful ones that really made it in globally, I think we can only name maybe five, right? You can talk about Jeff Bezos and all of that, but Jeff Bezos is basically also not an entrepreneur like Steve Jobs. He got the job, right? So like I said, I challenge people to say that I, I, I applaud I people's ability. And I think as parents, we should always allow people to want to succeed in every way they want. But the reality is we need for them to still say whatever you want, make sure you get a proper education. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically for me. Yeah. I just... okay, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Chesha, for that. I I have to agree with you. The missing link is the education bit because you you might just you know put up a stand outside the house and sell and sell a minute, but how is that going to sustain you if you look down the path 
10 years, 20 years down the road. It's not as simple as just putting up that stand walking and people, you know, passing by and uh, just grabbing um, a cup of soda or a cup of lemonade for that matter, which opens up our discussion today to, you know, making um, other options viable for our children, not just limited to STEM, uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And, and Chisha has already commented on what it would take for our children to be uh, more successful or, you know, the, the missing yeah. link, yeah, the education, missing. yeah, in entrepreneurship. Um, my question to you, uh, Puan Rajan or Diana, is about the arts. What about the arts? You see, because arts if... I mean, looking at the scenario in Malaysia, we know that parents in general tend not to encourage children to delve into these fields. And we have a tendency to, you know, encourage and push our kids to get the scholarship for, uh, to do engineering, to become a doctor, to become an engineer and whatnot. But what's happening to the other fields as well, the arts and culture and which I believe is actually equally important in the development of our nation. Over to you, Kwan. Yes, uh, definitely. I mean, uh, for Yasan Kazana, for example, we not only sponsor the STEM areas, okay, but we also sponsor uh, arts uh, courses, you know, uh, courses like uh, public policy, political science, uh, economics, um, sociology, psychology, you know, so uh, even, even linguistic, you know, so these are the, the, the courses that we also um, support. But I guess that um, I think um, a lot to do with, uh, with the high school students, I would say, a lot of emphasis given to them, stem, 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 you know, so they are not really exposed, not many who are actually exposed that, you know, um, to, to apply for courses like economics, political science, psychology, when they, they, they are actually in, in their foundation studies, uh, probably in India, these are among other classes that are the uh, counselors, uh, you know, the school counselors, you know, it's actually to also um, uh, to, to promote um, this uh, arts uh, subject uh, as well. Okay, no longer is that, okay, kalau you must art stream, okay, these are the, the second tier type of students. It's, no, because there's a lot of, uh, you know, good opportunities uh, out there. Um, even in, in, in arts uh, spaces. And for, for uh, Yasan Kazana, uh, like I mentioned just now, we sponsor uh, the, the art streams as, as well okay, for the undergraduates. And uh, for this year, we have a new scholarship program, what we call the Kazana Lestari program. Okay, so these are the areas where we supported the um, mainly um, the, the, what we call the ACE, you know, um, the arts, uh, education, environment, okay, community development, okay, and knowledge. So these are the five areas that we supported the, this, uh, the, um, the students who want to pursue their masters uh, in, in this field. So, yeah, I mean, knowing that, you know, uh, that, these are uh, some of the areas that are equally important uh, for for our our country. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a very uh, good point that you wanted to uh, basically remove the stigma of these art streams. Once upon a time, uh, we were in achieving our independence. We need builders. We need the technical people mm -hmm. to to develop the nation. But having too many of this group, we will have an imbalance of these other areas. So that leads to the point now, Cik Shah, uh, and I think this is something that I know many of us would always wanted to find out. Uh, 
Faraja no talks about school counselors providing that exposure or opening up the mind of the youngsters. But to me, talent starts from home. And home has the mom and dad. These are the prime example who can become a counselor or to a certain extent, uh, provide the opportunity and allows the children to discover their passion. Yeah. So to me, uh, the parents has all the means and resources for those who can. I, I know that the B40 will be more challenging to allow this uh, discovery of their passion of children, you know. So what are the ways and means you would, do you have to allow parents to be able to open up the pathway for the children to discover their passion or their talent? See, because uh, that's the only way, in my opinion, a parents, uh, uh, children can discover just beyond the engineering and the doctors that they have seen. I mean, obviously, uh, they got sick, they see doctors. Uh, if um, they saw the policemen, like many of us, they put policemen because policemen wear uniform or bomba. You know, we got so attracted with this. You know, so their exposure level is so much kind of narrow. So this is where parents come in to then widen up. So how can we widen up? What are the ways and means that we can widen up knowing that you know, we have more resources, more technology and tools to help this then. Maybe from even your experience for that matter. Um, if you're talking about my reality right now, my children are busy into Korean dramas and K-pops. So uh, they don't want to become a doctor. I think they just want to look like somebody from Korea. Anyway, I actually differ, if, if you don't mind, I differ with the fact that I don't necessarily think that the children today lack any kind of exposure. I think because of social media, because of the internet, because of YouTube, they actually have a lot. The question here is, what is it that we can do to shepherd them? Yeah? I think the issue around here is, how do we come and look at what do they like, what do they do, and how can we shepherd the thinking? The entire thing about motivation, and again, I'm sure Paraja will definitely you know, uh, have a view around this, is we want to be able to talk about what can we do to maximize someone's motivation so that they can become better, right? One of the things that also I think as parents, we have to realize that everything that they do moving forward is a choice. We just have to go and give them here. So again, I have a tendency to like to give life experiences. My daughter, as I said, enjoys uh, her K-pop groups, right? Originally, it was, Daddy, can I have some money to buy an album, right? So after a while, I told her, you know what? Why don't you figure out a way where you can make money so you can buy your albums? So she realized that she was buying off albums from another person who was three years older, who was just basically, okay, I bought this, I've heard this, I no longer want to use this, I want the next album. Does somebody want to do that? So you've basically started the, the issue of commerce, right? And what do you do is basically you put it out inside there to say that, you know what? Um, I have albums for sale because you've got things like eBay and everything, Shopee and whatnot, and you allow people. So people are like my daughter, right now I realize, because about a couple of months later, she gave me a few hundred dollars and said, Daddy, this is for you. Now, never in my life, have, has my daughter given me money that is not driven to Raya? But I said, where'd you get the money? She said, oh, I sold my albums off. Now, as an example for some of these things, I think parents, we need to be able to say that, look, look at what your children want to do. Some of them like to do gaming. Some of them like to do a lot of, you know, uh, YouTubing and all of that. Find out what they do and try and have a conversation around that with them around what is it that they can do. How do we build a career around that? Just get them to figure it out. I know some of us here said that, you know, I think someone was thinking, I want to become a YouTuber. We basically have an issue with that. But right now in even Malaysia, you've got your Insta, Instagram influencers who are making money. You've got your YouTubers who are making money. I think what we can probably do is we try and figure out what that is first. 
before we say, cannot, 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 do your homework, right? We need to be able to allow ourselves because as I said, our job is to be able to shepherd and create logic for them rather than to say no, right? At least, again, that's my personal feel because I would rather shepherd it for someone like them to be able to look at rather than they do it behind my back, right? Now, let's be also, I'm going to say, you know, because when I was talking to, you know, when we were developing some of the things with regards to the National Economic Council, one of the main things we basically should start thinking about here is, again, how do we become better entrepreneurs for ourselves? So, yes, let people make money selling the roti canai or selling the nasi lemak in Friday while they work from home. Teach them the basic of math. How much is that? Teach them those type of skills. If they look at YouTuber, ask them, you want to become a YouTuber, how are you going to make money? The question here is we want, because children memang curious. They're very curious about some of these things. Our job is just to create that logic around them, right? People say, oh, you know, we cannot say that becoming a gamer is not, because if you look at it, even on Astro today, there are two channels dedicated to gaming. We actually have in the top 100, 12 Malaysians who actually make on average of between 150 to 600,000 US. So again, they're making a lot of money playing games, right? When I was playing games, basically, I basically got penalized, right? Now, when people look at games, you try to figure out, hmm, they've got a skill, right? Just like people have skills to become better doctors, better accountants, better engineers, we just recognize that the world of opportunity today is a lot bigger, right? So again, just to, you know, before I close this off, I know a lot of people are worried about entrepreneurs, but I'll tell you this, a lot of the entrepreneurs, when you're looking at even people in my daughter's case, they don't look at Malaysia, right? Because they say, as long as somebody's interested, they pay me the money, uh, you pay the cost of shipping, I'll send it to Singapore, I'll send it to Jakarta, so the world of work and opportunity is no longer limited just to the country. So for me, I think we also have to start adjusting ourselves, right? To understand the reality of their, what they are coming into, right? So that we can also say, okay, can I, is it fair for me to tell my son, don't play video games when he could be extremely good at it and can play money, right? I'm not saying he shouldn't or she be played, but then again, as I said, as I tell my son, there's a time for you to play games, which I encourage, but there's also, again, a time for you that you have to do your homework. So for me, again, two things. Education and interest is one of those things that we can nurture. And I also think that even for the B40, most of them are actually very entrepreneurial because they also have to be taught as parents, how can you help? If you look at the Sarawakians, that's one of the things that they do very well. Right, even you know some other states in peninsula, right? So that's again, you know, just just a viewpoint that I have. Uh, over back to you. Thank you very much uh, for that thoughts because um, I want to go to Puaraja Diana in terms of doing a reality check. Uh, uh, the risk is always there to allow the children to do whatever they want to do at the expense of the study. You know, although. You know, playing the joystick now uh, is a good uh, skill because they can play, they can use um, drone, you know, to do all sorts of things, photography, agriculture, planting, and all those things. So fr from your perspective, uh, Puan uh, Nodiana, do you think that we can, we can empower these children to do what they want to do? and then you know just manage the risk at the later stage or do you do some form of guidance so so if you so now that you are a parent and you hear from Chet Shah you know empowering his children to sell k-pop and that sort of thing so in your opinion is, is this something doable realistic for the parents nowadays uh i i think that in anything that we do is always about moderation, lah. Okay? Then there's there's uh, there should be a balance uh, between giving uh, some form of empowerment, but at the same time, uh, you know, parent is still being parent, lah. Eh? You you 
you still want to give some some guidance um, to to your to your children. Okay, uh, some some feedback. It's, it's a combination. The the uh, interest uh, from your children, but but you know, uh, it's also um, uh, it's also about you know uh, giving the guidance. Okay, and at the same time, uh, there should be also be a reality check. In for example, that if you if you if your son want to pursue engineering, okay. So is he actually strong in maths or not? Okay, kalau kalau if they are actually he actually struggle in in maths, so the advice then is that although your interest probably in this uh, course, but you know reality check is that you you struggle in in this in these few subjects and, and in particularly in maths, so there should be some some balance in terms of. Okay, uh, in terms of the whether uh, your 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 son or your doctor can actually you know cope with certain subjects if you want to pursue certain courses because we know for the fact that you know if you want to pursue certain courses there are certain um, I would say um, certain subjects that become very major in 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 during during their their degree program. So these are some of the things I would say the, the reality checks that, that parents uh, can, can advise uh, their children. So it's a combination, I would say a combination of passion, interest, uh, and some form of, of uh, guidance. And then and, and at the same time, also reality check in Malaysia, is there job opportunities in the area? Is that you want to pursue because we don't want uh, our children that you know um, spending four years five years for their degree program in the end of the day that you know there's there's not many opportunities uh, for them and I think that's why that we always uh, encourage um, the students can to always upgrade themselves upskill themselves Okay. If they know that you know suddenly there's a demand in data science, okay. If your university uh, offer that course, you can take the additional courses, or even you can learn uh, outside um, outside universities. And there's a lot of uh, online courses available. So always make yourself uh, relevant, yeah. Because um, I, I think what um, important to note is that um, education. It's just, I will say, a ticket, and it's not a guaranteed pathway for the children. Okay, what education gives you is actually uh, give you the skills, okay, the the thought process, you know, so that you'll be able to think differently uh, from from the rest. But it doesn't ensure you. I mean, regardless whether you are engineers, whether you are you're becoming accountants. It's actually the thought process, and I think that's why you can see that more and more, uh, for example, the banking industries they welcome very much uh, graduates from uh, engineering because why? Because this normally you know uh, the, these engineering graduates they they are good in in uh, about critical thinking in terms of uh, logical thinking as well as in in their maths. So probably that will be a, a plus point for those who want to, to go into the investment line. So I will see that in, in future, there's a lot of cross, uh, cross uh, courses, okay, cross skills, rather than just one, one, one course uh, for, 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 the, for, the, for the students. Yeah. I think that's, a, that's a quite an insightful thought coming from you. In fact, I've acronym what you said, uh, called GRIP, G-R-I-P. I can type that. Uh, you, you said it just now. First, you give them guidance. Yeah, G. And then R is you make sure that you put in the reality check. Yeah, in your guide, uh, guidance to them. And strike the balance of their passion and interest. Yeah, so this is the GRIP that we want to have that dialogue and discussion with the children. So I, 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 I heard what you say just now earlier about 
you are no longer into only the technical STEM type of jobs and moving into this public uh, environment, political. And Jake Shah emphasized on the aspect of entrepreneurship uh, using the school of hard knocks. Tak payah pergi sekolah pun, you just do it uh, uh, with you. Let me, let me, I wanted to share you now the next second video by World Economic Forum to show they, they, they came up with what they call the seven futurist job. So now we are into looking at the future. Uh, something blew my mind when I saw this video because uh, it is certainly something that uh, we can never imagine that. So as you can see now, you know, we are emerging new job titles, that, you know, calamity, cyber attack. I, I, I knew that this is certainly a uh, change again, the landscape, and this is a reality that I know uh, Jamila started to now seeing what are some of the emerging issues happening now. Yeah, um, I'm actually interested to know, uh, one, about mental health, particularly among our youth, because we know that high expectations can work, but sometimes too much of high expectations can actually result in adverse consequences, particularly to the students. Would you like to comment on this? Over to you, Boy. Yeah, in terms of their career, you know, choices that they in have to... Their performance, performance and whatnot. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, just now my, my line was, was really un unstable. So can, can you just uh, repeat that, Jamila? Yeah. What I would like to know is your comment on mental health, because we know that parents, especially those with high aspirations uh, on their children, they want their children to excel, to be above average. But I would say this is not just uh, limited to parents with high performers. It's parents in general. They do have such high aspirations. So based on your experience, what you observe, would you like to comment on that? The uh, sometimes unrealistically high expectations of parents on students. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, um, Jamila. Uh, I guess uh, as a parent uh, myself, okay, we always uh, any threat being threat. <laughs> I would say in the in the society where you know. It's always uh, su how success is being measured. I think, um, you know, sometimes we look at, you know, as a, a number of A's, you know, straight A's as a measure of success. Okay, um, but um, that's why I think it's important uh, for, for the reality check, okay? Because each child in terms of their, their ability, you know, in terms of their, their capacity is different, okay? So we need to, uh, to be realistic, put realistic expectations to, to our children. Of course, uh, no doubt that every parent would want the best for their, for their children, right? So that, that is uh, no, no doubt about it. But yeah, I think uh, setting the realistic expectations uh, is is um, you know is 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 a way to go uh, for the parents and success uh, should not just be measured by the number of A's um, that the 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 I mean, your your childrens uh, obtain but really what the, the the definition of success you know is is something that parents uh, need to look at okay so uh, in terms of mental health. You know, um, it got to do with also um, the coping skills uh, of the of the children. I mean, of, of the students itself. You know, uh, some can adapt uh, better, uh, but some are not. And and I think that's where then the support systems comes in. And it's always, uh, I mean, the parents uh, and friends. I think. Uh, will need to be the eyes and ears, okay, for, for, I mean, 
of if, if it's a parent, it's an eyes and ears for your for your son or daughter. If you're a friend, you need to be the eyes or, or ears for your friend. Because normally when when um, students uh, struggle with, with mental health issues, there are signs. It doesn't come straight away that, you know, okay, I'm having a mental health. No, there are always signs to it. You know, where sometimes certain certain uh, certain children or certain students develop uh, eating disorders. Okay, whether you eat too much or you eat too uh, you eat little, and, and some uh, you know uh, students may not start not giving their full commitment. Okay, uh, skip classes. Uh, you know, not uh, sending their their assignments. Um, you know, as per as per the timeline. So these are sometimes the small small indication, and and sometimes there are also you know there are mood swings. So look up for these signs. Okay, look up for these signs. Um, in in your in your children. So probably there's there's some uh some sort of a small signs that that you know parents needs to be aware of. Sometimes it's just a matter of have a chat with them, then it could just solve the problems. But sometimes certain certain students probably will require, you know, assistance from the counselors, you know, um, from the trained counselors in schools or in universities, in college. And to some extent, you know, when the counselor assess, then okay, in, in some cases, then they will push these cases to psychologists. Okay, and if require some treatments okay, uh, and, and uh, medical uh, medicals, uh, assessments, then, then they will then uh, you know, forward it to uh, psychiatrists. So as, as a parents, um, we need to be open and you know, accepting because there are actually parents who are not... Uh, they are just saying that oh no 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 my 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 daughter does, doesn't have any problem yeah, she's she's okay she's okay but the fact that your 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 daughter or your son is not okay so accepting that uh, there's a problem and willingness to to seek help i think that's the that's the 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 important thing and and you know we have a uh, quite number of sports uh, nowadays for the for the mental health so I guess that, uh, that 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 shouldn't be an issue, but uh, to to know that you know that there's specific signs because sometimes for the for the children for the for the they don't even know that they are in this uh, mental health near track. They're not even know. So for us, for the parents or even for the friends who who can see that there's something different in terms of their behavior, in terms of how the way they do things. So so need to step in and you know have a chat with, with that particular person and and get the relevant uh, assessments i think that way we are able to save um the 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 students or the children's uh, you know when when we be able to help in uh, early uh, in in india if they have a mental health uh, issues yeah thank you so very for much. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for that. Um, I just wanted to add on to what you have said. This is so true, even for me and uh, Ahmad Fakri here, because we deal a lot with parents and we deal with youth as well. It's so true that some parents, you know, they, 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 the minute their children fail to meet their expectations, the message, the words that they say, and how they communicate with the children it says oh, these children are already failures so you know there is this biological and psychological need for the children to make their parents happy and by virtue of what their parents said they feel like life is not worth at all and you know they can go so far as to experience depression and some kids can even become suicidal just because of that so for you viewers out there, I would like to stress on what um, Puan Sri Diana, uh, Puan Siti Nor Diana has already, uh, sorry, Puan Rajan Nor Diana has already pointed out. It's so important that we as parents support these children. It doesn't mean that they are weak. 
but it's just some challenging moments in their lives. And as we, as parents, we actually must be there to support them. And for them to realize, for the children to realize this perhaps unpleasant experience will actually build up their resilience. Thank you for that. Yeah, I, I, I think this is an important angle in our whole discussion today because we are trying as much as possible do this planning. Shah, being an HR practitioner, which I'm an engineer by background and moved to HR, we like to plan things. We like to make sure that you know we work, uh, uh, plan the work and work the plan. And, and things doesn't go accordingly. Sometimes within your control, sometimes it's outside your control. Then, then derailment will happen. Uh, things and and Puan Diana did have already enlightened us about the challenges uh, in terms of mental health because of uh, they are the children. They are also growing, right? Their, their hormones is being developed as they were pursuing, and they got external challenges with their friends and peers, and certain things did not work out from the earlier understanding that, you know, halfway at the houseman or at the, uh, when they do their medical uh, internship. internship, you know, they stop halfway. Guys, you have studied for six years and, you know, suddenly it's not my cup of tea. Uh, engineers suddenly says that when they start their first day of work that, no, nope, this is not what I want. I really want to do chef, you know, I want to do how that's really what I, so you can see now that is going to be some real tough conversation and dialogue happening. You may have invested your money. We all have invested our time. Effort has been given sending. No, you see, they say used to be when uh, uh, children do look overseas, you send to Subang airport. Now parents are sending to Heathrow airport. <laughs> <laughs> no longer and staying there for uh, and staying there you know so so we are talking about big investment big expectation but still the plan did not work out how do we handle this kind of situation Sha? i know you may not have gone through yet but i want to tap your hr perspective you do your succession plan and suddenly that person was supposed to be the ceo or vice president didn't turn out what it be so what what's how do you handle this? Uh, the practical advice given to me last time by one of the CEOs is this. You can only plan as much as you can. You just have to prepare for things to go wrong. Right? And when I say wrong, that's too much of anything. But the thing is, at the end of the day, to your point, I don't think anything that's been, that has been spent around an education is the waste of money. Right? Because as we talked about here, you give them basic problems, problem solving skills. You give them the ability to network. You give them a lot of things that they basically learn a lot. So that's not a waste. Chungunye, to the point around here is again, if they don't want to do, you just have to ask themselves. You just have to kind of like figure out whether or not they've thought this through. Again, I think sometimes, respectfully, we have parents, we have to have to understand at the end of the day. We want the best for our children, but we have to also understand the lens. I've had friends who basically started off, at your point, become, become chartered accountants only to basically join an accounting firm and say, I hate numbers. It's like, uh, okay, so what do they do? They basically became, you know, um, a counselor, right? They basically, and right now they're doing very well because she decided to take alternative, you know, education and became a very good uh, psychologist or a therapist to some extent, right? But again, to your point, I mean, you know, as parents, whatever we can spend, what we want to do, we just have to realize that there is probably a long-term plan that we don't realize, right? In succession planning, they always say that, you know what, this is the next percent. But as we all know in organizations, anything can happen to that person, tomorrow that person can leave the organization, and you're basically stuck with the next alternative. So we just have to recognize that there's a lot of alternatives to where people's future can be, right? Um, one of the conversations I suppose to, today as parents, we need to ask ourselves is, what is it more important for our children to do after they graduate? For them to get a job, 
or for them to be successful. Getting a job can do. You can apply a lot of things, become an employee. But does that necessarily make them successful to us or to them? Is something we have to go and ask ourselves a bit more, right? So yes, you're right. I'm paying for an education right now, right? Which is, you know, quite substantial, right? But the fact of the matter is, I do believe that, you know, at the end of the day, the skills that what she has will probably give her the right kind of background to move forward. If she decides, as again, uh, Poraja talked about, she, she decides to become a banker, no problem. Father and mother used to be a banker, right? If she decides basically that she wants to open her business, also we'll suggest that because I think that's what we should do. The early conversation around depressed is sometimes to, to we talk about here is there's just so many things inside the head of children today about peer pressure, about wanting to be the best, about societal pressure, about being the best, and then about peer pressure about the parents, right? Well, parents all me want me to do that. Sometimes I said, as long as you get a graduate, as long as you graduate and get a job, I'm happy because at least you can get a job. But even at that particular point, there's always a lot of things that we can do. We all have to run, I mean, again, you know, it's not, it's actually very true that people are actually very resilient, right? People are resilient provided we give them the opportunity. You know, I want you to become a banker. You don't get May Bank, you don't get CIMB, you don't get public bank. We only have what 30 banks or 20 banks in Malaysia today, right? The question will always be, you know, what is what's the next option? Is something we have to consider, right? So long, long story short, I think don't worry about the investment, it will pay off. Right? It's just that we have to be comfortable that if it's not to become a doctor, they probably have got something that they want to do that that's going to be successful to them. And I think for me as parents, I'd rather have that rather than they be, you know, they be in a job they don't like. And then, you know, you and that's basically also adding to depression. A lot of people who basically take, you know, some of these things because my parents asked me, you know, after a while. Someone, a friend of mine, parents they passed away immediately. <laughs> right? I mean, I, did, I mean, again, I'm, I'm not lying. He literally said that, you know what? Um, I no longer have to worry about my parents. I'm actually quitting my job and I'm going to set up a business. I put it what? They join Sati. Right? So, again, a lot of things can happen. And I, I'm sure that, you know what? Uh, to, your, to my earlier point, we plan, we hope that they understand the value that we bring. We hope they see the same thing. If it's aligned, Alhamdulillah. If not, we just have to make sure that at the end of the day, what can we do to continue to support them until the point that they can also start supporting us. Right? Yeah, I, I, I think we need to agree. That was really a, a strong message about whatever you have spent for the children. It is not a waste. It is an investment that at one point in time in their life, they would be probably requiring it. I mean, when you were telling about the story of the, the guy, I, I remember Chef One, Chef One, our celebrity chef, uh, and he wrote it in his blog about his mother wanting him to become an accountant. Yeah, and he did. He, you know, eight years, he flogged and slogged with the in-tray, out-tray of financial statement and everything. But I think once he has fulfilled it, then he said that I like to go to my the passion that I have uh, for my life. And, and I, I think that some people, you know, you, you need to respect the, 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 uh, the way that they want to approach. And importantly, is, is that this is my mantra uh, as an HR practitioner. People can take away your job, but they cannot take the career that you have in yourself. Because the one that can guarantee you that job is you yourself, not the country, not United Nations, not the AI robots, it's you. So I think when you have found that uh, talent or you found and discover what you can offer, you know, nothing will stop you behind. I think we are reaching, before I give the, the, the panelists some, their final closing remark, I like to invite whoever is present. This is a, the die hard. I would imagine parents or listeners, uh, the three of you here, uh, to open your, if you have any questions verbally that you want to ask, uh, please do so. If you want to put in the chat, we are happy to entertain. 
uh, I will check the also comment in the Facebook uh, in case there is yeah. uh, any. So I think uh, anyone uh, from in the air listening, you have any burning question to our panelists, please do unmute yourself. Okay, going once. Anyone? Margaret, Amy, or Noor Shahira? No? Okay. If there's no questions, uh, or I think it was a well spent hour of the last more than one and a half, one hour or so. I think you have certainly uncovered uh, so many different aspects. Uh, that we have tried to touch is the breadth of the the topic uh, from the time we want you know to look at how uh, we can be we can be the forces to support the country deficits in terms of manpower like what Shah mentioned and then uh, putting the reality check when Diana mentioned about um, in terms of uh, the kind of skills, the kind of requirement, and what parental support is needed, you know, being realistic, uh, being agile, uh, being supportive, and knowing that our children will not, uh, uh, will certainly face some bumpy rides uh, as they choose their career pathway. And you are there to, to provide that support then. So I remember this metaphor of um, imagine your children uh, is uh, rowing a boat through the uh, river brooks and slowly it is going to be a much, much more stronger uh, stream uh, flowing then. Do you hold their boat or do you help them to row or do you just give them the support because they will soon be navigating their life then. So, oh, okay, uh, Amy has an issue. Amy, Amy Tan has a question. How do we advise children if we felt their ambition say to be hairstylists and we don't feel it's right for them? Anyone can take about, because this is about alignment of what the children want versus what you think that they ought to be. Um, Baraja, would you like? Or would you like me to? So my okay. So maybe just let me just try and do it myself. If I had this conversation with my son, I'd basically say, okay, what? How would you make money? Again, as I say with everything else, I test with them, right? How would you? How much money would you expect to make? How would you go doing about that, right? And basically get them to really also articulate their understanding, because again, let's you know, I don't necessarily think it's wrong as a career to become a hairstylist. But they also must realize that it's, if you're looking at today, they must go to school, right? Last time, if I remember 10, 15 years ago, that Peter and guys as a school, whatever salon, and that also requires a lot of education. So in my view, if they wanted to do that or with anything else, I'll sit down with them and say, okay, tell me why, how do you make money from it, right? If you don't, what basically will you do, right? Just as long as they've thought it out and everything, then the question say like, if you compare that against a different organic things. So I would ask them, what would be the alternative if you don't become a hairstylist, right? Have you ever thought about that, right? If you can't become a good hairstylist, what would be the other thing? Because sometimes I think the question is, children may not know enough. Just like when we were young last time, you asked me in standard one what I want to do. First thing was bomber. Second thing, police. Third one, doctor, not on the list today, right? I think it should be right there. But I think, again, how I would do it as, you know, if you're talking about Amy's question, I would just sit down with them and have a conversation and just literally get them to see this through and also say that, you know what, if has is it an option today, what else would you be looking at, right? If they have their test, their resolve, and they've thought it through, then I suppose then it's up to us to see whether or not we want to play the parent card and say, no, you're going to become this or let them try it out for a while and let them realize on their own because eventually they're going to be adults juga, yeah? Yeah. so yeah that's my view sorry thank you thank you over to you uh, 
okay uh, if for me i mean the same i think we will we'll have uh, definitely we will need to have conversation uh, you know uh, about this you know uh, the clear plans okay what what really okay if you want to become hairstylist okay there are definitely there are um, i would say there are certain schools that that is related to how do you become a hairstylist so if you want to become hairstylist yes you can but you need to be someone who are really good in it you know so that you can make a career out of it not just you know working in one of the high uh, hairstylist shop no but you need to have a good career carry out of it so this is something that we need to have a, a deeper conversation uh, with the child and then to know what what really you know is it something that because you look you look at someone does it or is it someone that something that you really want to do so understanding better i think um from from that perspective and then uh plan ahead because uh, right now there are there are schools you know that that's in a technical uh, areas you know vocational uh, vocational schools that are applicable because um for example i have uh, i have a cousin who's actually you know uh, into this um, spa business okay so but she's she's you know making really well uh, in in this area have few few outlets so it, it can make a career out of it you can become an entrepreneur you can become you know you can uh, so so it's not something that okay hair stylist you just work with with one of the kedai gunting rambut uh, something like that no but you can really if you really plan well you can make this work uh, for for your child but yalah need, need to understand more uh from from their perspective what is their motivation to it is it just a mere interest and passion is this something that you want to do uh in the long run because uh, you have to remember that uh you know it's about discovery our life is about discovery and then um it is i would say a lifelong learning even at this age myself um can you still learning new things every day so it doesn't mean that you know after finish of studies too that if if your if your son or your, your daughter uh thinking of doing something then that's it that's the end of it you know because there's always they can always upgrade up skills you know and there's a lot of uh, platforms uh, for 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 your Uh, son for your daughter to to learn uh, nowadays uh, you know it's about lifelong learning it's not just limited to degree and that's it you know so yeah i think uh, i i'll start i pass back to the ni uh, yes. yeah thank you puan that is so true about that you know idea of it's all about lifelong learning and for me and for amak fakri here we feel that You know, we are preparing children for an uncertain future. It's so important to guide them. And the key word here is to guide their thinking, right? Because we don't know how the future is going to be. The future is so uncertain. And the most important thing for them is to have the attitudes, the resilience, and for them to believe that I can do it no matter what. Because if they live a life that is purely for us, they could become so miserable that, You know, it's it's something that I don't think any parents would wish upon their children. You know, no matter how strong and ambition you want to plant in your children, I feel like they they have to lead their own lives. We can guide them, we can show them, we can expose to them. This is what it's going to be like if you uh, if you choose this and this. And even then, we know that careers are evolving. You know, just like uh, you mentioned, Puan, hairstylist, are you going to end up in one corner of a street, unknown street, or are you going to be this person who actually handles businesses? So it's it's not a, a rigid view of what a profession is going to be. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I certainly feel that within this almost one and a half hours, we have covered more than we initially thought we would cover with enough Uh, enough death so i would like to thank both of you yes, uh, if you would like to wrap up have some last words um, one or two minutes uh, yes one or two minutes uh, first from jisha and then we move on to point 
<laughs> okay. Um, thank you again for the invitation. Um, I do think that for parents, if nothing else, the challenge will always be in trying to adapt to what we want for our children, right? So I guess if nothing else, as I would advise myself, have an open mind a lot of things, see this through and try and look at basically what is the benefit for both, right? What we don't necessarily want is for them to live a life that they regret, which was something that we put in their heads, right? So again, you know, uh, have trust that we raise our children well, and you know, that they are adult enough to make the right decisions and be there if it's not, because you know, there's nothing wrong with hitting the reset button. Yeah, so that's enough for me. Thank you again. Yeah. What about you, Juan? Any last words? Yeah. Um, thank you very much for, for uh, the invitations, uh, uh, Fakri and Fonja Mila. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, um, yeah, we live in a, a very volatile, uh, there's a lot of uncertainties. Uh, you know, complexity and, and ambiguity. So that's, that's the world that we live in right now. So uh, as a parent, we need to always uh, support um, our children, uh, give them the guidance. And uh, when I mean by support, it's not, it's not just supporting them when they, they succeed. Okay? Uh, but be there, be with them, even uh, when when they are at their lowest point in their life, because that that I think we as a parent we need we should celebrate success, but we also need to note in terms of failure uh, how then we can you know be their backbones and lift their spirit and then uh, what are the things that they can learn uh, from their failures as well. I think this is something that we need to also note and celebrate their their fail not to in a way to celebrate their failures in terms of you know what are the learnings that they can take uh, from from there i think the 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 emotional support uh, from parent uh, i mean the guidance is is really key uh, you know because we want of course as a parent we want our children to look us i mean to refer to us if they are in doubt they, when they have issues they, when they have problems and so yeah, uh, I guess um, be there, be there uh, when they are in good uh, and even during their 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 rain. I think we learn from each other uh, because learning doesn't doesn't stop here. Okay, so it's a lifelong learning, and I hope with that, uh, you know, give them the support and motivation, and inshallah. Uh, you know, our children will, will, will become uh, successful, if not in the eyes of the societies, but is successful in the eyes of their parents. And, you know, and, and I, I think for me, the most important thing is the happiness, you know, the, the happiness of, of the, um, the, the children is, is really important than just about about the, the success that been defined by the society. So with that, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, AF and, and Jamila. Yeah, excellent, excellent uh, closing remark from both the panelists, because I thought that we have summarized this uh, topic, knowing that the parents play a pivotal role in creating and reinventing the future of their children's career. I think what I wanted to say is, is that the conversation must continue in, in light with the ever-changing situation the, uh, surrounding us and knowing the reality of what's available uh, so that then everybody do it with an open eye, open mind, and certainly with some open options. I mentioned just now that parents would like to have a deal with their children. Yes, parent can be the deal breaker or the deal maker. It's really up to you to make sure that there is success. And along the way, if things doesn't work well, reassess. And the earlier, the more proactive you are, the better and the higher chance of you achieving what is the intended goal and objective. 
Ladies and gentlemen, there are things which within our control, then there are things which is beyond our control. I would like to say to myself that let's, let's be uh, contented with what we can control. Uh, our children are probably not the best Einstein, but we would like them to be Einstein uh, and not the best of Elon, Ma Elon Musk and uh, Steve Jobs and all those people. But yeah, we want them to aspire to be as successful as those. But at the end of the day, they also need to be happy in what they want to do and what they want to be. And as parents, we have asked and put our hands to our heart that we have done our level best to allow them to achieve, to be someone who can contribute back to the humanity. I thank you again to both the panelists all the way from uh, Jakarta and also uh, uh, Raja Nodiana for joining us in this session, a heart a heart-to-heart -heart session by the parents, for the parents, and to the parents for the sake of our children then. Till we meet again, thank you very much. And for all the good things, it's certainly from the almighty creator and any of the shortcomings is from our end, which we still continue to improve. Shah, thank you very much. And Puan Raja Noor, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. And uh, for all the participants, Thank you for joining Thank us. you for joining us. Uh, if you want to share this video session, it will be uploaded uh, in the YouTube uh, of Kumam Superdad as well as also you know, in my Facebook, which is available for sharing then. Thank you very much. And